coming up on Starting Line. So from the ages of 18, 19, and 20, who has a um, military ID, who has taken the opportunity to enlist in the military, to fight for our freedoms and liberty, to be able to buy a beer in their local VFW or Legion Hall. Should underage members of the armed forces be able to have an adult beverage? On this week's Starting Line, find out more about Representative Joe McDonald's proposal that would allow military members under the age of 21 to purchase and consume alcohol. It's an argument that many of us have heard. If an 18, 19, or 20 year old has the courage to serve in the military, they should be allowed to enjoy a beer. Of course, it's illegal to be in possession or consume alcohol if you're under 21 years of age, regardless if you're an active military member or not, at least in our state, for now. Representative Joe McDonald sponsors a proposal that would allow people under the age of 21 who are serving in the armed forces to consume, purchase, or possess alcohol. The Republican from Delano spoke to us about House File 1647. Well, 1647 was an idea that wasn't necessarily mine, uh, and uh, it's many folks from my district, including many friends, family members who are in the military. So it was a very simple bill. Of course, you always got to be cautious around here when you say a simple bill, right? Nothing's really simple around here. But uh, what it does is it allows anyone that is serving in the military, that is under the age of 21, so from the ages of 18, 19, and 20, who has a um, military ID, who has taken the opportunity to enlist in the military, to fight for our freedoms and liberty, to be able to buy a beer in their local VFW or Legion Hall. Now the bill is more, you know, uh, expands upon more than that. It allows them to be able to purchase and consume alcoholic beverages. But I propose it's, uh, it allows them to at least be able to have a cold beer in their local VFWs and American Legions with their fellow veterans whom uh, have fought across uh, the world for America. Where did the idea come from? Do other states do this? Uh, to my knowledge, uh, other states don't do this, but I, I, I don't know. Do, uh, have you heard of I other states? I think I looked a little, uh, a little background on this. Mississippi, I think, is another state that, that, that does do this. Well, thank you, Chris, for explaining that. Or <laughs> let me know. It's, uh, you know. it's just a good common sense thing. Now, there are concerns. I get it. Uh, many people, the opponents will say, are, is anyone at that age even old enough to have the responsibility to be drinking? We certainly don't want to encourage our youth to be drinking prematurely. We have already troubles with uh, substance abuse and alcohol abuse or uh, drinking and driving. But yes, that's a fine debate, but you're throwing that out there, assuming that all those who are responsible enough to enlist in the military, to serve and fight for our freedoms, to die for our country, are not responsible enough to have a beer or a drink or whatever the case may be uh, on their own uh, time. They're responsible enough to uh, vote for our president of the United States or even me. Uh, they're responsible enough to, um, uh, to die for their country. Uh, then I think that we must trust they're responsible enough to be able to have a, a beer at their age considering they're serving uh, our, and protecting our freedoms and liberties. Right, that's kind of what we talked about before we, we went on camera here. The argument is for some people that if you have the courage to serve in the armed forces, you should be able to enjoy an adult beverage. But why put forth this proposal now? Well, I had a bill a couple of years ago, um, but um, it just was, there wasn't the right timing. You know, uh, there are many other pressing, pressing issues in our state, dealing with health care and transportation and education. I'm on the tax committee, so I see a lot of bills in the tax committee. Now that we're... Um, it seems to be a little bit more time on uh, my uh, plate, if you will, to be able to propose this bill. And several folks in my district uh, had asked me, Joe, would you really carry this through for us? Would you, this be the year to do it? So um, this, is, this is why. And just lastly, I see a few Republicans have signed on to the bill. Senator Jeff Howe is carrying it in uh, the Senate. Do you see any DFL support on the horizon with this? Yes, uh, I, I do. I've spoken to uh, several DFL that are uh, friends that uh, uh, agree with that as well. Some just didn't want to put their name on it, perhaps. Others uh, wanted to, but I was too quick to drop the bill. You know, around here, we have a short window. We got, what, five months to get the job done. And again, there are other pressing issues, but uh, I can chew gum and walk at the same time. I, can, I have, I think I have 10 or 15 bills in the hopper or that, uh, or that I'm working on. And this is one area that I can certainly can do while I'm concentrating on other key issues such as health care and education. So that's partly on my fault, uh, Chris. I did not take the time to go around and 
uh, specifically get uh, some of my friends on the other side to sign. But I will today and during session. Representative McDonald's bill has been referred to the House Commerce Committee where it awaits a hearing. Remember the bill a few weeks back that would provide additional funding for mental health counseling for some farm families and businesses in rural Minnesota? It was a bill sponsored by Representative Gene Poppy that we featured on Starting Line. House File 232 was passed off the House floor March 4th by a 123-0 vote. It now heads to the Senate where another DFLer from Austin, Senator Dan Sparks, carries the measure. For more information on any of the bills that we feature on Starting Line or any bill that's introduced in the House, visit the House website, www.house.mn. Thanks for watching the Starting Line. We'll see you next time.